No. Oh, God, no. Hey, guys, welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. Yeah, Monica is always watching. She is, uh... She's making sure we're not being bad boys. Or girls. So, we're gonna continue on with Yuri's route, and I think it's Valentine's Day, so we all know that this might get a little bit... Mm, it'll get a little hot! So... Uh, could, I am currently, I have my tea with me. Today's flavor is grape raspberry. Purple, just like Yuri. As I walked down the street towards school, I yawned and cracked my neck. It's another normal average day for me. No, it's actually, wait. It's not. It's another normal average day for me. No, it's not. No, it's actually Valentine's Day. Man, just think about the date night I got planned is increasing my anxiety. Hope you brought condoms. It's not like I've never been on a date with Yuri before, but... Well, we don't actually plan things out often. The relationship is more of an organic one. Our dates are spontaneous. I like that. That's the best kind of dates, I think. Finally, having a formal date feels a bit surreal, to say the least. Ah, it kind of depends on your schedule, I guess. But at the same time, I'm also looking forward to it. Just gotta wait out the school day. Today's one of those few days where I wish that I didn't have to go to the literature club. Yuri's waiting for me in the hallway, as usual. Hey Yuri, you ready for tonight? She gives a light giggle, her eyes shining with affection. Of course, Salty. That may be strange for me to say, but I can't wait for the club to be over. I was thinking the exact same thing. Great minds think alike, eh? Hoo <laughs> I'm even feeling a bit jittery, all things considered. Well, all that jitterness is gonna be wor worth it. Or at least I hope so. By the way, I made you some chocolates. She pulls out a small pink box tied shut tied shut with a thin ribbon. Inside are, inside are heart shaped chocolates drizzled with various syrups and toppings. I hope they're to your liking. Are you kidding me? They look amazing. Thanks Yuri, this is officially the best Valentine's Day ever. If only because this is the first time I've gotten romantic chocolates rather than friend chocolates. I can't believe that these are homemade. Yuri shyly ducks her head, mumbling a humble dism dismissal of my compliment. Just switch by headphones. My headphones were on the wrong, wrong side of my head. It's normal to make homemade chocolate Valentine's chocolates for your loved ones. They're nothing special. Don't sell yourself short, Yuri. I seriously can't wait to try out one. I sneak a quick kiss on Yuri's cheek while no one's looking. The breach of the school rules startled it for a moment, but her surprise is quickly replaced by playfulness. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I wonder if I will get any chocolates from the club members. Uh oh. As we step into the club room, we find Monica and Natsuki engaging in friendship chocolates. Salty, Yuri, perfect timing. Let's just get this over with. There's a suddenly a pack of cookies hurtling towards my face. Luckily, I'm fast enough to catch it. Natsuki then hands Yuri her cookies as Yuri looks through her bag to replicate the gesture. Hey, why did you toss that at her? To why did you toss that at her? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna give this special treatment to someone who's not even gonna give something back. But isn't that what White Day's for? Uh, but that's a whole month away. I need to look up what White Day is. Valentine's Day is just a commercialized sham that forces girls to buy chocolates and stuff for guys. We have to buy them all over all our guy friends too, not just our crushes. You made these cookies though, didn't you? That's beside the point. I want their Valentine's Day. Our Valentine's Day suck. <laughs> we did have a tradition though in my old school. Where you would buy crushes. Uh, my, my, my tea was getting a little bit too close to the edge there. I think it okay though. Uh, we buy crushes like soda and such. And I, I, not to brag, but I actually got like a couple sodas once. And I was like, oh my god, I'm almost done! But I kind of know who did it, and that's okay. It was awesome. Ah, here's Salty. Monica hands me a bar of chocolate wrapped in pink foil. I do see Natsuki points. I do see Natsuki's points. I'm lucky that I don't have everyone in my life though, because I don't have to go through all the efforts to make homemade chocolates. Although you are supposed to get chocolates back from guys on White Day. If I recall correctly, most chocolates enhanced on Valentine's Day are actually between women. Exchanged. Well, that makes sense. The majority of girls probably have mostly female friends. I totally butchered that. Goyles. 
Plus, it can be nice to just swap sweets with people you're close to. See, it, Valentine's Day doesn't need to be between lovers. It could be just between friendships and people you do have relationships with that don't aren't exactly, you know, sexual or whatever else you want to call it. And on, on, th and on that note, thanks for the chocolate and cookies, guys. For a moment, we all exchanged thanks for the sweets. By the way, where's Siori? I noticed that she wasn't here, too. She texted me saying that she went home early because she was sick. Pretty unlucky day for her to get sick, huh? That's pretty sad. Yeah, so it's a bit concerning how often she seems to get sick nowadays. Yeah, I'll check up on her when I have the time. Alright, now that we've got all the Valentine stuff out of the way, let's get on with the club meeting. Okay, everyone, I'll be seeing you all tomorrow, then. Whew, not that that's over. It's time for the- Oh, it's time for my date with Yuri. Ready for the night of our lives? Are you sure that you're not building it up too much? I'm wounded by your words, Yuri. Giggling, we make our way down to the school's entrance hall and momentarily, se and momentarily separate to find our respectively sh respective shoe lockers. As I open my locker, something white tumbles out. It's an envelope. Uh -oh. The corners of the envelope are slightly crumbled, as if someone has been holding it too tightly. Inside is a small note that simply reads, I'm happy that you're happy with a small piece of chocolate taped to the bag. Paper. The note's ink is blurred a bit, like by a little bit of water damage. Come on, don't be dumb, Salty. You know exactly who this is. Whose note is this? Why'd they give it to me? I'm just a normal guy, not someone who breaks hearts left and right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, Salty. I can't think of any reason that I would have gotten this note. Oh well, I'll think about it later. Yeah, I'm sure that whoever sent it is probably not committing suicide as we speak. Ready to go? Yuri appears next to me as I speak, stuff the note in my bag. Oh, shit. Is she gonna find the note and be like suspecting that he's cheating? And then she's gonna go psychic? Psych psychic. Psych psychotic. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden her third eye opens up and she like twists my head around with her psychic powers. Whoa, you scared me. <laughs> yeah, I just need to swap my shoes and I'll be good to go. By the way, you never told me what we were doing today. Didn't I say that I wanted it to be a surprise? Well, yes, but... Wow, she looks surprisingly cute when she puts on a pouty face. Don't worry, you're gonna find out what it's soon enough. Let's head home so we can change out of our uniforms, though. It's gotta be like a, a, a rose petal uh, walk, a rose petal trail that leads to the bedroom. <laughs> One change of her clothes later, we're both sitting on the train. It sways gently as it moves, and the rhythmic rattles it, rhythmic rattles, it makes lures me into a daze. Yuri leans against me, resting her head on my shoulder as we watch the scenery blur by ourselves. Occasional whiffs of lavender and shampoo float my way. How could she always smell so good? It's kind of weird. The sunlight streaming is soothing. It's nearly hot enough to be uncomfortable, but not quite. Salty, are you falling asleep? What? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> you better not miss our stop. If I do, you have full rights to break up with me on the spot. Oh, they went to an amusement park. Yeah, that's gotta be totally the, uh... So apparently there's a way to... Ah, oh, crap. There it is! Yeah, there's go. That's gonna be a good screenshot. Middle mouse button makes it do that, okay. And I, I missed something. I led Yuri by the hand as we approached the amusement park. The sounds of music and children laughing filled the air. Can I open my eyes now? Yep, check it out. Yuri's face light up as she takes in the scene. Roller coaster and other rides tower overhead while crowds of people mill around the park grounds. I haven't been to a theme park in years. Last time I went to one, it was my parents who brought me there. I actually want to get one with her smiling. A wistful look crosses her face. I squeeze her hand in comfort. It's so heartaching and nostalgic. I wonder how it'll stand up to my memories. Thank you for bringing me here, Salty. Of course. I was just kind of nervous that you wouldn't like it. I suppose I'm not exactly the exciting type. And I love you just the way you are. In fact, it makes things that much more exciting and fun when you surprise me. I see. Thank you. Anyway, let's stop spinning around and enter the park. So where do you want to- oh, so where do you want to go first? What's there to do? I'm not familiar with this particular park, so... How about one of the roller coasters? Uh, 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 roller coaster! She's afraid of them. She's afraid of heights. I take it that you're not a fan of them, huh? Not particularly, no. Okay, we could do something else then. I pull out a map of the park and look over it with her. 
Mm, most of the attractions are rides, but there are two in particular that I might that I think might interest Yuri. But which one should I suggest first? Oh, dead. Yeah, yeah. Not even a contested haunted mansion. Because she's uh, it the horror stuff. How about the haunted mansion? It seems pretty relevant to us. <laughs> Ooh, I've always wondered about haunted houses. Have you never been to one before? No, the only ones I've gone to were student-run haunted houses during school festivals. Those likely don't quite match up to the professional ones. Do you think this is one worth match up to the thrills we enjoy in our novels? Or the one day to find out, right? Ah, oh, dude, it's Zelda! <laughs> A few minutes later, we're standing in the quiet, sun-dappled corner of the park. There are surprisingly few visitors here, although the silence, silence only adds to the atmosphere. The haunted mansion itself is modeled after a traditional Japanese home, like the ones you see in Kyoto. It looks quite normal on the outside. That may be why it's not one of the more particular attractions. Or popular. However, the huge wings of the house sprawled around the grounds indicate that it'll be a lengthier experience. Are you ready to enter? Yep. Yeah. Do you think it'll be scary? I don't know, but I'm highly anticipating this. Her eyes shine with excitement as she grabs my arms tight. There's nothing like the rush you get when you're fearing the unknown. Seems to remember Yuri talking this, about this on Halloween. <laughs> Let's go in before you explode from the excitement then. We brush the front entrance curtains aside and walk into the house. As we enter the entrance hall, we are merely met by an exceedingly anxious looking man. Oh, you're finally here! Do we know you? Yes, you're here to deal with the ghost, right? Hmm. The fabled paranormal investigator and the legendary Shinto priestess. I guess we are now. Good, good. Please hurry up and help cleanse my home from these spirits. I'm begging you. Where do we go? Here, right this way. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you to, but always move forward or the spirits. Well, I wouldn't wish those horrors on my worst enemy. And with his ominous words, he shuffles us through a doorway and slams the door shut. It takes a moment for my eyes to adjust to the darkness. It's actually quite dark in the haunted house itself. The hallway is old wood and plaster, giving it a bit of an abandoned feel. Salty, are you coming? Yuri tugs my arms, clearly eager to get going. Alright, alright, I just want to head run headlong into danger, you know? Just don't want to. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. We walk, slowly walk down the hallway. The air is silent and still, with dust motes dancing freely around us. Nothing to fear but fear itself. That's, uh, Nixon? Or oh, Reagan. That's Reagan, I think. The only sounds are those of our footsteps and creaking wood. I almost felt the compulsion to hold my breath so it doesn't break the silence. Yuri's warmth at my side is a welcome distraction from the house. At this point, her clutching my arm is more of the comfort than hers. Uh-oh. Suddenly, a dark shadow darts across the end of the hallway. Yuri grips, grips tighter on my arm. Uh, did you see that? Perhaps it's one of the spirits the man mentioned earlier. Spirits? Huh. Don't forget your suspicion of disbelief. Yeah, yeah, nothing's really happened so far yet, though. Uh, don't tell me I'm hearing things now. I think you spoke too soon. The unearthly moaning sounds exactly what I imagined hell would sound like, and it's coming from behind us. We slowly turn around to find the source of the sound. It's a girl with pear, pale, nearly bluish skin, her neck twisted around at an impossible angle. The white dress she wears is tattered, her body covered in dirt, blood, bruises, and lacerations. Stringy black hair nearly covers her face, but not quite. We can still see a chilling grin appear when she sees us turned around. As we stand frozen in place, the apparition takes a creeping step toward forward. Her movements are natural and disjointed. She takes another step and another, and suddenly she's running straight at us. Holy crap! We finally, f finally find Snap. We finally find Snap out of it and begin running away with me pulling Yuri forward by my hands. The other typo. Uh, 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 not so fast, Salty. Hold on, let's duck in the room somewhere and hide. Whipping around a corner, I grasp at the first door handle I see and fling it open. I pull Yuri towards my chest and we tumble into the room together. 
She quickly slides the door close as she quickly slides the door closed as quickly as possible while I sit on the floor and catch my breath. Phew, that was exciting. <laughs> I can't believe how scared you were, Salty. Oh, like you weren't scared. We laughed a bit at the adrenaline rush through our veins begin to subside. I'm so out of breath. I suppose there are downstairs to staying indoors and re I suppose there are downsides to staying indoors and reading all the time. Ha, huh, same for me. Both video games and anime instead of reading. Oh, dude, I did not expect that. That door actually moved. Huh? Did you hear that? How many times am I going to have to say that today? It sounded like it came from the closet. We both look at the closet door. What was closed shut before, the door is now a few inches open. Alfred gets a peek into the darkness inside. Kill! A hand suddenly appears from the crack, the faint light highlighting a hint of nose and a cheek. Um. Do you want to play hide and seek? Yuri, I think we should get out of here. Yeah, let's. <laughs> I know I gotta check. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. I don't know how much time has passed, but we're finally out. It blindingly brights outside the shadows of the haunted house. The fresh air is especially refreshing, giving all the running we did inside. So what'd you think of that? I can see why people get addicted to the thrill of haunted houses. Honestly, it was better than I expected. I thought there would be more cheap jump scares, but it actually played out in our suspense quite well. <laughs> yeah. You know it's good when it makes you scared even though you're aware that everyone's an actor. Mmm, I especially liked how the girl in the closet from the beginning reappeared near the end, too. Attention to details such as continu continuity can often elevate things from merely good to amazing. I think my favorite part was when we had to walk through a pitch black room together. <laughs> like I said, the fear of the unknown is a powerful drug. Anyway, we still got some time left in the day, so where do you want to go next? Hmm, let's have a look at the map again. What do you think about the fantasy village then? Oh, we're gonna do the fantasy village. Ah, uh, is that one that's based off a magical village in that one book series? I wonder how immersive it'll be. I'm guessing pretty immersive since the park is known for it. Come on, let's get there before the lines are too long. Ah, uh, it would be cool if it was like Hogwarts or something, but I guess that's kind of what they're going for, and it's Hogwarts. With a few minutes, we find ourselves at the entrance of the village. The place is packed full of people, like, likely because of the popularity of the book series. Yeah, this is totally what's supposed to be. Wow, it looks exactly as I pictured it. Mm-hmm, only downside is the crowd, eh? One sec, gotta cough. Okay, back. I suppose we'll have to make sure we're not separated. Yuri tentatively grasps my hands and I squeeze hers and mine. I definitely don't mind how the crowd is making us press against each other. Bet this attraction is a huge money maker for the park. I mean, look at all the shops. It seems like the, nearly all the bil buildings house shops of some kind, ranging from cafes and restaurants to gift shops and bookstores. Whew, everything here is pretty expensive, haha. <laughs> I expect nothing less from a theme park. We walk around a bit, window shopping and chattering. The architect really didn't spare any expense in making sure the village was as detailed and realistic as possible. Do you have anything in particular that you want to check out? Like stuff for the books that you want to see in real life now? Hmm, that's a good question. Maybe, well, this may sound a bit silly, but I've always loved how the food was described in the novel. I've always sound so succ succulent and delicious, like butterbeer. Ha! Huh. It's no surprise that well-written description of food would have caught your attention. Do you think it might be probably because you learned how to cook too? Along with your parents' influence, I mean? Uh, maybe. It probably helped to turn me into a bit of a foodie, at least. I used to read the book near dinner time to increase my appetite. Jeez, I'll have to reread the series then if the writing's that good. But if you want to try some food, let's get a look around for some. A nearby cart piled high with plastic bugs catch my eyes. Hey, how about we try some of that? Death, yeah, butterscotch, okay. Ooh, is that the famous butterscotch drink? Let's try it and see. Nearly a thousand yen later, damn, this sounds like a lot, we both clutch mugs towering with golden liquor and foe. Yuri eternally takes, takes a sip. How is it? It's quite rich and creamy. It reminds me of root beer, but with butterscotch instead of saxifras. I think I quite like it. I wonder how they made it. 
<laughs> I'm sure you looked it up. I'm sure you could look it up on the internet. By the way, you have a faux mustache now. Whoa! She quickly licks her upper lip in const consternation. Ah, oh, that was super cute. Kind of reminds me of a cat there. That was cute. Uh, well, anything you do is cute, though. Thank you. I guess Yuri still doesn't know how to take compliments gracefully. That kind of gives me her an endearing charm, though. At least in my opinion. You're so nice to me, Salty. How could it not be? I mean, you are you. Yuri sm smiles bashfully at that. I pull her towards me to put her arms around her waist. Now how about we find out some, some huge turkey legs to eat? Heard that this place is famous for that. Oh man, I'm stuffed. I can't believe we spent the whole time eating. <laughs> Suffice to say, I don't think I'll need to eat dinner tonight. I don't think I'll need to eat for a week at this point. Whew, I'm kind of tired. Would you like to go back home then? Hold on, I actually want to go on a ride with you. W what kind of ride? It's just like a... Uh, don't worry, it's not a roller coaster. I was actually trying to save the best for last. Come on, just follow me. Okay, Salty, I trust you. There it is, the Ferris wheel. I point up the wheels, towering around us. The colorful passenger cars sway gently in the air, and they travel around the wheel. The Ferris wheel? I figured that we had a kind of had to take a ride on it because of all the Valentine's Day legends associated with Ferris wheels. You know, stuff like taking a ride on the Valentine's Day means you'll stay together for the year. Just a year? I want to stay together for life. Well, if it's such a tradition, we should probably honor it. One cue later, we hop into one of the gondolas and fight a, feel a slight jerk after a moment as the whale begins turning. Have you ever been on a Ferris wheel before? No, I don't actually think so. It's quite tall, isn't it? Yeah, but if we have it, if it wasn't, we wouldn't get any view. Yuri picks over the edge of the window to look at the ground, slowly shrinking below us. We aren't very high right now, at least. Just give it a minute and we will be. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. I see a few children waving at the wheel as we lift it higher and higher in the air. It's kind of a strange feeling, seeing everything becoming as small as their map counterparts. Everything is bashed in a golden glow from the sun, so the settled sun, as if the whole world were dipped in honey. The silhouettes of other rides loop around in the sky, but none are as tall as the Ferris wheel. With the noises of the park faded away, it's quiet in the gondola. Uh oh. Hey, I think we're at the top now. Yuri looks straight at me with a bit of strange smile on her face. Are you going to look outside? Yeah. She sneaks a quick glance out the side for a second, then slips back to staring at me again. Her knuckles are white from gripping the edge of her seat. Yuri, are you afraid of heights? Yeah. You had to have known that. I mean, she was like very ex anxious about going on rides, dude. You should have known that. Oh my god, Salty. This guy's like so dense. I just want to smack him. You should have told me. We didn't have to do this. It's alright. If you're happy, then I am too. My son, they flashes back to the note I found earlier today. But I'd like to see you happy too. If you're generally not having a good time on the ride, then what's the point? You're so kind, Salty. Ah, uh, it's just common courtesy. You're kind and funny and smart. You're good at talking to people, even if you say otherwise. Why are you here with me? What do you mean? I'm here with you because I want to be here. But you're so good. Do Yuri's words just fail her? Maybe the first time I've ever seen it, it happen since I've known her. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> sure, she stammers and takes long pauses to think sometimes, but she was always be able to find the right phrases to accurately convey her thoughts. She has a rueful expression on her face. Clearly she knows that she's grasping for words. And how can I be good too if I'm nothing like you? Yuri. I lean over to grab Yuri's hand in mine. You have to be like me to be good? Is Salty your god? Is Salty the, the pedestal of which you... You base humanity on? It's a little sad. There are a lot of things I don't necessarily like about myself. And there are tons of things I do like about you. I don't think anyone else has been able to change my mind as much as you did. Well, except for my parents, of course. 
but the one who got me into literature and inspired me to go to the university after I graduate. You're the one who I can see myself with ten years into the future. Even the little things endear yourself to me so much. The way your eyes sparkle when you're passionate about something. How cute you can be when you pout. How insightful you are when talking about normal things. How beautiful you are when you float off into your own world while you think. I softly brush a strand of her hair away from her face. How's your hair falls, how your hair falls into your face. We're so close to together that I can feel the warmth of her breath on my skin now. Salty. And suddenly our lips meet. Oh, damn. Her lips are soft and warm. I can almost swear I taste the faint hint of butterscotch. After what seems like an eternity, we finally break apart. I love you, Gary. I, I love you, Salty. This has surely been one of the best days of my life, so thank you. No, thank you for coming along with me. Of course, I came along. I'm your girlfriend. You want to try looking down at the view now? Come on, I'll hold you. You're safe with me. Okay, don't let go of me. I wrap my arms around Yuri's waist from behind and we take in the sight in front of us. She's slightly shorter than I am, and I'm just about able to rest my chin on her sh chin on her head. I hear her laugh as she wraps her hands around mine. If she's short, how tall are you, freaking salty? We stay like this for a while, slowly allowing the gentle bob of the gondola to take us down to the ground level. Dude, they just like cut off like all of us out of nowhere. Okay, it wasn't so bad we looked over the edge, was it? No, I suppose it wasn't. It was a beautiful view, very picturesque. Thanks for helping me get over my fear, at least for that moment. Of course. Anyway, just go for it, Salty. Mm -hmm, my boy! <laughs> it's kind of late, so do you want to stay the night? Oh! Uh, I'd be happy to. Things are happening! <laughs> it seems like we're both suddenly overcome with shyness as we start heading into my house. I curse myself as I fumble with the door knob, but we eventually find ourselves inside. You'd be cursed when you're fumbling with that bra strap, too. Flipping on the light switch, I somewhat nervously turn towards Yuri. Do you want anything to drink? Uh, just water would be fine, thanks. I quickly busy myself in the kitchen, rummaging through cupboards as loudly as possible to break the tension. She's gotta realize what I'm thinking about, right? The silence soon returns to the pass the mug of water to Yuri, though. Okay, so mom, 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 salty or whatever said that this is her his first girlfriend. So this is their first time, at least. We know it's salty's first time. And he's just going right for it. He he ain't deadly dallin at all. Are you hungry? I could bring out a few snacks. Okay, he might be at, at bring it out a little bit. Did you already eat enough at the amusement park? Ah, true. Just tell me if you need anything, then. Alright, thank you. How about a condom and some of that salty dick? There's a small amount of awkward silence. Uh, salty? What is it? Bang! Could I use your shower? Oh yeah, of course. You're probably all tired and sweaty from today. Not to say that you're super sweaty, though. I just bet that you walked around a lot today and stuff. Dang it, salty! <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so... She's wanting to prepare herself, you know? She wants to make sure she ain't stanky when y'all get into bumpin' bumpity. Here, I'll show you to my mom's bathroom. That way I can use the other bathroom at the same time. Okay, thank you. Do you have an extra towel, too? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. I led Yuri to the master bath bedrooms and switch ba bathroom. I quickly rushed over to the other bathroom to take a shower myself. I'd almost forgotten, but this is a place where I saw Yuri harm herself. I can nearly see the bloodied razor's blade lying on the floor again. Ah, snap out of it, Salty. It's probably the worst time to dwell on those things. Still, I can't help but be reminded of it. I'm going to need to censor some of this, aren't I? Or I just need to shower and get out of it as soon as possible. A few minutes later, I'm sitting on my bed and shaking my leg from nerves. Why do girls take such long showers? Well, I guess Yuri has had her hair to wash. It seems like a lifetime later. <clears throat> oh, I burped. I didn't mute it. Ah. Oh. Well, it seems like a lifetime later. I finally see her into the room. Hey, fancy meeting you here. 
She sits down beside me on the edge of my bed. Salty? I know I keep saying this, and sorry if it's annoying to constantly hear it. But thanks for today. You really are the perfect boyfriend to me. How can I be annoyed at, all, at that? Especially since you called me the perfect boyfriend. You really are too good for me. You're so thoughtful. I never think to do anything for you or buy any spontaneous gifts for you. I'm so selfish. L look, here I am making everything about myself again. Is this going to be a recap of our Ferris wheel conversation? Yuri, you don't give yourself enough credit. Not being selfish, you always think about other people rather than yourself. If you want an example of your own thoughtfulness, remember when you bought me the copy of Mor Portrait of Markov? Ah, oh, I never forgot about that. That was so long ago. Seems like only yesterday to me. I mean, how could I forget about the time a beautiful girl gave me a gift? If you can call me the perfect boyfriend, then I can call you the perfect girlfriend, too. Salty. I lean in close. Her lashes are long and flutter with each breath she takes. While her eyes, I could almost get swallowed up by those clear bowls of violet. Little flecks of dark purple amidst the reflecting light on her eyes give her iris as a jewel-like quality. Impulsively, I press my lips against hers. The emotion from back on the ferris wheel was swirling inside me again. The kiss is brief, but leaves me wanting more. Suddenly, Yuri clears her throat. <laughs> Salty, could you close your, your curtains? Oh boy, is this really happening? I get up and pull the curtains closed with a swish. Could you turn off the light as well? Okay, whatever makes you comfortable. To be honest, I'm kind of glad that she wants the light to be off. I wouldn't. I know that first time people, you know, they want the light off. So they, you people are self-conscious about their own bodies. I'm not too self-conscious when it comes to my body, but it'll still feel a bit embarrassing of being naked in front of Yuri. As I flip the light off, I hear a rush, rustle from Yuri that followed by a small thump on the floor. I can't see much when I turn around, given that my eyes haven't adjusted yet. Even so, I can tell that Yuri's top is now laying crumbled on the floor. Oh damn. Oh damn. Oh damn. Not not that. I mean, usually I'd be like, oh damn, but now, oh damn. That's... That is some deep cuts. Yuri, are you sure? Voice cracks a little as she answers me. She's exposing herself, though. That's one thing you gotta see. She's not only exposing herself naked, she's also exposing, like, what she's done in the past. So there's a bit of a metaphoric stuff going on here. Yes. Sorry, I wish I could let you see me. But not right now. Not yet. It's okay, we can take it slow. Can I touch you? I have no idea what I'm doing, but I guess it's safest to ask questions just in case. I would agree. Ask ask about it. If you're having sex as such, if you if you're not, you know, you you don't want to catch somebody off guard. You got to you want to ask them, is this okay? Is this okay? So, yeah. I mean, they might not like want me to tell you this, but the secret to sex is communication. Talk about it, you know? Talk about what you want and, you know, and there's a lot more emotions and talking and such than people think. So it's not like the porno. It's not like the pornos. Plus, knowing how shy Yuri is, I don't want to rush her before she's ready. Okay. I step closer to her, so close that I can smell the lavender fragrance in her hair and the faint scent of sweat from her body. Let's hope that I can ease some of her anxiety. My, my fingers gently brush against her side. However, she flinches at my touch. Sorry, did I surprise you? No, sorry, it's just that your hands are cold. Ah, shoot, sorry about that. I quickly rub my hands together and tip to warm them up. Uh, no need to apologize. Phew, this moment of embarrassment helped break the ice a bit. I reach out to hold Yuri's waist again. I can feel goosebumps all around her skin now, but she doesn't flinch this time. Slowly. Gently, I move my finger around along her body, exposing the soft, firm curves before me. Yuri bites her lips, closes her eyes. Would it be too much to hope that she's closing her eyes in pleasure? After a few moments, I find my hand at her shoulder and pull her in for another kiss, this time more intense and passionate. 
Without thinking, I rub my hands down her arms and am suddenly startled by the raised bump snaking across her skin. No! She quickly jumps away, tearing her arms out of my grasp. Some of the scar tissue was softer, but other wounds were clearly still scabbed over. Sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't even thinking about that. I, I didn't mean to touch your scars like that at all. For a moment, Yuri stands across from me with her face in her hands, breathing hard. Then she finally looks up and makes eye contact with me. It's okay, it was an accident, so... We can stop for tonight if you want. No, I'm fine, sorry, I was just startled. I want to keep going. She steps forward and puts her hands on mine, sliding them down from her my chest to my stomach. She steps forward and puts her hands on me, from my chest to my stomach, okay. Although her moments are as graceful as ever, she moved more slowly now, more methodically. Having reached the edge of my shirt, she suddenly moves her hands under and un up and under the cloth so that she's touching my bare skin. Taking this cue, I pull off my shirt. We both pause for a moment, uncertain of what to do. Her face is completely red, and she's looking down at the ground. I guess she's still embarrassed, but to be fair, I am too. She tugs down my pants a bit, probably to moving things along. She tugs down on my pants, probably to move things along. Okay. I respond by unbuttoning my pants and pulling them down. By the time I look back up, Yuri's taking off her leggings, too. Do you want to lie down? All right. I step aside, waiting for Yuri to get on the bed first. Her movements are almost laughably robotic, a stark contrast from her previously smooth motions. Hey, are you okay? I'm, yeah, I'm just a little nervous. But just so you know, I am too. My reassurance seems to give Yuri the final boost of courage she needs as she briskly clam clampers into bed and lies down before me. Her eyes flicker up to meet mine before darting away to stare stauntly at the wall. Damn titties! <laughs> yep, gotta be... <laughs> gotta be uh, blocking those. Never in a million years did I think I'd be in this situation. Well, I have some confidence, dude. My eyes hungrily wander over every inch of her body, with each passing second causing my desires to grow and grow. Elegantly curved, smooth skin. The way her hair is spayed out underneath her. And let's not ignore the elegance in the room. Her chest. The elephant in the room. Her huge old titties and take old bitties. Oh, Salty, I'm so proud of you. It's been a while. You've been through some real shit, but you're finally there. You're finally at the finish line, my man. Her breasts rise and fall almost hypnotically, involuntarily arresting my attention. Even the darkness can't hide how supple and full they look. It's a bark of stupefied I am that I haven't reached out to touch them by now. I can feel blood rushing to a now very prominent member of my body at my heart rate accelerates further still. New member has a member! Makes my makes girls' hearts go doki doki. <laughs> a little bit of a blast from the past. That was my first episode on this channel. Yuri glances back up at me, presumably waiting for me to do something. Stick my your dick in my vagina. Biatch. When she meets my eyes again, her hands seem to instinctively move on over her body to cover herself up. Sorry, uh... My words startle Yuri, who slowly uncovers herself again. I'm sorry. What for? The lights and... I don't know. She turns her head away so that it's hard to see her expression. It's okay. You look just... Okay, Salty, get it together. You've been gawking like an idiot for long enough. I race to slip my boxers off, trying to ignore how self-conscious I feel that the most honest part of my body springs up, eager to be free from its cage. As I get on the bed, Yuri peeks back to look at me. Her eyes flicker down to the southern region of my body. I'm just hoping my body isn't a disappointment, given how incredibly alluring hers is. Now that I'm practically on top of her, I, hesitantly sl I hesitate slightly. Aren't you bitch to start with the fingers or your tongue? I want to make her feel good, but I wouldn't know what to do with my tongue, so I opt to carefully slap my head down past her stomach. Yuri's body trembles slightly under my touch, 
As my hand moves further and further south, her breathing grows more and more irregular. Is that anticipation? Or just nerves? Her face is turned away again, so I can't really tell. Finally, with my fangs mere, fingers mere millimeters away from her, I slowly begin to stroke the warmth beneath me. There's a sharp, sharp intake of breath as Yuri twitches at my first touch. Are you good? Does this feel alright? She nods, although I can feel her body stiffen in anxiety. I wait for another answer, but she doesn't make any other moves. Well, tell me if you feel uncomfortable. I again began rhythmically messaging her again, attempting to adjust the movement of my fingers in accordance with her, her body cues. Although it takes what feels like a few minutes, her body eventually begins to relax more and more. Both worked up so sweat by now, although how much of it is just from nervousness I can't tell. What I can tell though is, the pleasure, is that pleasure in her is somehow making me feel good myself. Yuri occasionally makes strained noises, and although part of me wishes that she just allowed myself to make sounds, another part of it thinks that it's cute and that she's shy. As if reading my mind, Yuri finally opens her mouth to say something. I. Yuri grasps a bit as she tries to speak. I'm ready. Pulling away from her for a moment, I lean over to grab a small foil packet from my nightstand. Despite my hands shaking, I manage to fit the rubber over myself. My face flushes when I realize that Yuri's been watching me put it on. With the realization that I noticed her eyes on me, Yuri swiftly looks away again. Don't worry. Like you said, we're both nervous. Yeah. Yuri spreads her legs apart and covers her eyes with an arm as I try to position myself comfortably. It's now or never, Salty. Oh damn! Go on, missionary! As all my feelings of passion come to a head within me, I push... <laughs> head. <laughs> Push forward into Yuri with one quick motion. <laughs> I don't know what that, that, that was. <laughs> Maybe do the leaks out. <laughs> the cry of pain makes me stop for a moment. Are you okay? I know that might hurt for her, but I didn't expect it to be that bad. Yeah, it's just go more slowly. She peeks out at me from under her fingers and smiles through a wince. Oh, damn. She's enjoying it. Look, she's smiling. Damn. <laughs> I reassume my, I resume my movement, but try not to get gentle. Try to be more gentle this time. It's hard to do, though, as the sensation, it just feels too good. It's warm and wet. It fits snugly over me as if we were made for each other. In a way, I guess you were. An evolution. <laughs> Yuri begins to match my movement with her own, and I... Synchronization sends a satisfying tingle sur sur surging over my entire body. Oh, uh, <laughs> A moan involuntarily slips out of her lips as she bites down hard on her lip, lower lip to stop herself from making any more noise. I can't help make some grunts myself as I work my hips against her. Out of instinct, I reach out and tend to grab one of her breasts. The feeling of the warm, soft flesh adds another layer of pure pleasure shooting through my brain. I'm losing myself to the sheer satisfaction of the moment. Who could have guessed that sex would feel this good? It is pretty damn good. A primal hunger flares to life as I caress and squeeze her breasts, feeling the nub of her nipple beneath my fingers. As my feeling intensifies, I grab her legs and move faster. The change of pace causes Yuri to falter somewhat, losing track of the rhythm to our movement. However, she's able to mask my thrust again soon enough. The sounds of our grunts and pants grow more and more frequent, and I can feel a quick buildup quickly growing in, in intensity. The cessation of Yuri, my love of her, and everything begins to pulse in my mind until... Yuri. Waves of pleasure watch over me, building up into a climax. The sensation, it feels as though we're melting into each other, becoming one intense being made out of passion. The euphoria, only la the euphoria only lasts for a few seconds, and as quickly as it arrives, it's over. Long strands of hair stick to Yuri's face, and I try to brush some aside once I regain control of my body. Yuri's breathing comes out in quiet, little puffs as your covers as well. Salty. Come lie down next beside me. Dutifully, I crawl up to her side so that we're laying down face to face. I can't help but steal another kiss from her. <laughs> Salty, give me a chance to breathe. Sorry. I resort to holding her head instead, 
and slowly but surely our breathing returns to normal. We smile at each other, whereas the silence before were awkward, this one's a comfortable one, like the comfortable silence we've had in the past. Now, like, any, like always, we don't need to talk to each other to understand each other. I'm dreading the moment where we have to get up and out of each other's arms. But for now, it's just for the two of us in the warm cocoon, far away from the rest of the world. Oh, damn. That ends so quickly. <laughs> that was hot. <laughs> uh, so I guess now we go on to the the after party. What goes on after the socks? Like, I wonder, like, where is this going to lead to, you know? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I, I'm, I'm in it. But I'm going drink, to drink some tea first. I knew something was up when I bought grape tea. It's got to be a Yuri kind of night. <laughs> the sounds of my alarm rose me back to my consciousness. Is she still there? Is she still there? Is she still there? Or did she leave you? Nor may I be a little grumpy at the thought of yet another early start for school. But not today. Thinking about the Valentine's weekend, Yuri and I spent with each other. It really could have been any better. Waking up to her on Sunday with neither of us clothed. It's, it's Sunday right now? I blush as I hop out of bed. Now that we've taken our relationship to the next level, I wonder what the next occasion is going to be. Flashes of Yuri's body flicker through my mind. Man, I really am the lucky guy alive. With a grin, I complete the rest of my morning routine and head to school. So this is like the day after. Which looks like the weather is emulating my feelings. It's uncharacteristically warm today. And the nasty gray skies of winter is nowhere to be seen. Can't complain. Morning, Salty. Well, it's good that she texted you. I mean, she wants some more. Uh, hey, Yuri, what's up? Just thought I'd let you know that I wouldn't be in school today. Uh-oh. Looks like I've come down with some kind of cold. You gave her the COVID. That sucks. You don't need anything, do you? Like medicine or whatever? No, no, I think it'll be okay. Thank you for asking, though. You sure? I really wouldn't mind coming over after school. Positive. I'll let you know if you feel any better. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Hope you feel better soon. Thank you. Love you, Salty. Love you too, Yuri. Speak soon. Damn. If your girl's sick, go out and get her some chicken noodle soup. Like, maybe, like, eh, it depends on what her preference is. You know, if she's okay with Chick-fil-A, give her Chick-fil-A chicken noodle soup. If not, KFC or whatever. Aw oh, man, sucks that I won't be seeing Yuri in school today. Ha. Huh. I've really turned into a lovesick puppy, haven't I? I smile as I shake my head and carry on walking. And that's the end of today's lesson, everyone. So it's the same to end it on such an interesting note. I don't suppose anyone would rather learn about the relationship between Hitler and Mussolini instead of stuffing their faces with delicious food. His own stomach rumbles, causing the class to laugh. Well, I hope no one would, because I'm really hungry. Until next time, guys. <laughs> I stand up and make my own way over to the door. Oh man, I bet the others will tease me about Valentine's Day, too. Totally forgot about that. Guess <laughs> the Salty just knocks the door down. He's like, hey, guess who just had sex? And Sayori's just there crying. <laughs> Sayori, Natsuki, and Monica are always there by the time I step foot inside. Monica's typing something on her laptop while attempting to eat, while Sayori is wholly engrossed in her food. On the other hand, Natsuki doesn't seem to have any food in front of her, and instead focuses on what looks like yet another shouju manga. What's like? What's like? I... Okay, morning guys. It's warm today, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I have to say, it's a huge, huge relief because tennis presses aren't nearly as enjoyable when it's freezing outside. What was her voice? You still play play tennis in the winter? You're so dedicated, Monica. Why like crazy? You'd be amazed at how often these two traits consi coincide. As I pull out my food and begin eating, Monica closes her laptop lid and puts the machine into a bag if it's snuggling into. Is Yuri not with you today? Nah, she said she wasn't feeling very well today. 
Aw, oh, damn, she already printed it. Oh, <laughs> man, look. Natsuki mumbles something under her back that sounds suspicious like morning sickness. Yeah, probably best to act like I didn't hear that. Oh, what's wrong? Is it the flu? Nope, some kind of bug. I offered to go and see her after school, but she said she'd be okay. You know, that's probably for the best. What do you mean? I mean, you two already spent a lot of time with each other, right? I'm guessing you spent also spent Valentine's weekend with each other, too? Of course, it's nice to spend time with your partner, but it's also healthy to take a break, don't you think? I haven't really thought of it like that. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm just a bit worried, that's all. Monica laughs softly. Salty is just a little bug. I'm sure she's going to be fine. She's not a little child that you constantly have to look after. Okay, okay, I get it. It's sweet, though, that you're concerned, though. Yeah. Natsuki's must have been looking at my expression because she suddenly pipes up. If it makes you feel any better, I'll go and check up on her. Eh? She looks down at the floor. It looks like she's struggling with her words. Uh, I mean, she's my friend, too, so... I grin. Natsuki's always been someone who's really bad at hiding her true feelings. You're worried about it, too, aren't you? No! It's just, well, we're getting a bit closer, so she... Ugh. I just thought she'd appreciate if I was to see her if she was alright, okay? Oh, look at you looking out for Yuri so much. So cute. Seeing the look on Natsuki's face, Monica hastily interjects. I think that Sayori really means is that it's really nice to see you two bonding so well as of late. Looks like you both put aside your differences and it's great to see. God, you guys make everything so sentimental and awkward! Uh, sorry Natsuki. Anyway, seeing as Yuri isn't here today, here today, there's not much point in sharing poems for our class meeting. Instead, why don't we try writing one instead? Ooh, something new! Yeah, I'd be okay with that. What about the poems we've already written, though? What about the poems we've already written, though? We can share them when Yuri's back. We'll all get more feedback that way, too. Uh, I guess that could work. No complaints here. I figured you'd say that, Salty. I heard she was slightly preoccupied over this weekend and weren't able to write a poem. You dog. <laughs> you fucking dog. No idea what you're talking about, Monica. Well, have you written a poem? What a mystery we'll all be taken to our graves. Monica doesn't look particularly convinced, but thankfully the bell rings sparing me any further interrogation. As we packed away our things and prepared to head back to our homework class, an idea comes to mind. I think Yuri would really appreciate if I wrote a poem for her. Yeah, that'd be a great little romantic gesture. Let's just get through the rest of the day. Aww, you little... You love sick puppy. We are out of safe spots. <laughs> well, soon to be, anyway. With my final lesson over, I make my way back to the club room, eager to test my poetic abilities. I've really changed, haven't I? I didn't mind writing poems back in September, but now I'm just so eager to do so. Oh well, it's hardly a bad thing. Once again, I'm the last one in. As I sit under a desk, Monica clears her throat and addresses everyone in the room. Okay, everyone. There isn't really much for me to say. After all, you know what you're meant to be doing, so feel free to start. By all means, feel free to collaborate with others if you want to. I figured that'd be a great way to get some insight on how your guys write poems. Way to put us under pressure, Monica. Sorry, I just want to see if you come up with. If you want to fish it at home, that's fine. I just don't want to waste any session. I figure something new might be appreciated. It's okay, Monica. Come on, Atsuki, let's work together and see what we come up with. She leads her away as I reach into my bag. As I'm pulling out my writing mater material, I pause. It's that note I received on Valentine's Day. Man, I totally forgotten about that. What should I do about it? Even though I'm more than happy with Yuri, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't at least a little curious about whom the sender is. Ha! Huh, I wonder who it could be. Looking around, it seems that Sayori and Natsuki are busy. Well, at least Sayori is. And she animately chatting away while Natsuki looks like she's pretending to listen. Monica doesn't look preoccupied with something for a change, so... Hey, Monica. What's up, Salty? I lower my voice and shift my chair so I'm a little closer to Monica. This prompts her to raise her eyebrows as understandable response, I guess. Listen, can I, um... ask you something? Something confidential, I assume? She discreetly nods at the other two girls. I nod my head and slow her... and show her the now crumpled note. I found this envelope in my locker on Valentine's Day? 
I would not, I would, I would be shy. I would not show a girl someone's love confession, you know? I wouldn't do that. Especially a girl that can delete me. <laughs> hey, you asked me if I know who this is from? Well, how did you guess? Well, it's either that or you're going to ask if I sent it, and I think we both know the answer to that question. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> Though her tone is dry, I can faintly detect the humor in her voice. I sometimes forget how Monica likes to tease people. So, any ideas? You tell me, Salty. I blink at her. What's that supposed to mean? In other words, I'm asking you if you have any ideas yourself. Well, it has to be from someone I know. Can't imagine from any of my classmates. I honestly couldn't imagine it coming from Natsuki. And you obviously haven't, so. Oh, by the process of elimination, it must be Sakurai. My eyes wandered over the back of Sakurai's head. Monica must have been following where I looked as she nods. Looks like you don't need my detective skills after all. But Sayori? Did you also receive friendship chocolates from her? Yeah, but it's just that friendship chocolates, right? Monica stares at me for a moment. She's like, damn, are you really that dense? Somehow I get the feeling that she's gonna do her best not to roll her eyes. I don't know, I, I just... It's just weird to think of Sayori in that sense. We've always been f good friends, it's just kind of weird to imagine us being anything more than that. There's nothing wrong with feeling that way, Salty. Besides, you're happy with Yuri now, right, anyway? I guess, I just kind of feel bad for Sayori, you know? But there's nothing else to say that you can't spend time with her. But there's nothing to say that... But there's nothing to say that you can't spend time with her, as friends. I know she probably really appreciates that. Especially since we stopped walking to school together. A horrible feeling of guilt flushes through my body. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, Monica. It's okay. Now haven't you got a poem to be getting on with? Oh, yeah, for sure. Guess I'll get started. After some time, Monica stands up and dresses everyone once more. Okay, everyone. I think that's all the time we have for today. How are they all the poems coming along? I guess down on mine. I'm fairly happy with it. Although I'm not entirely sure how Yuri will perceive it. After all, she does have quite high standards. Pretty good. I think it'll finish the rest at home. Yeah, same here. Mine's actually finished. Looks like everyone's in the same boat then. We can sort out when to share the poems tomorrow. Because I really got to dash. I'll see you guys tomorrow. After swiftly packing away her things, Monica zooms out of the door with the velocity of a bullet. Me and the two other girls also start packing, and before long, we were good to go. While writing my poem, I decided that I wanted to walk Sayori home, but surprisingly, she's already gone. Natsuki's the only one left, and she awkwardly hovers by the door. You gotta be much longer? Huh? No, sorry. Guess I've been a little too lost in thought. I swiftly pick up my stuff and join Natsuki in the corridor. Still gonna go up and check up on Yuri? She nods. Sounds good. Let me know what she, how she's doing, okay? Sheesh, do you want to get do you get paid to worry or something? I start to laugh, but the memory of the cuts on Yuri's arm suddenly comes flooding back. The laugh turns more into a wince. Is she gonna walk in on Yuri cutting herself and she gonna find out and we have to silence Natsuki? Natsuki looks at me curiously. Curiosity. Curiav yeah, that. Yeah, probably. See you tomorrow. Natsuki still looks a little suspicious, but doesn't say anything. Yeah, that could be bad. It's been a couple of hours since I got home. Enough time for me to have finished my homework. With nothing left to do, I flopped on the sofa and browsed some anime. To catch up on my favorite series, my mind drifts over to Yuri's house. I wonder how Natsuki's faring at the moment. It's a little strange how she's the one who went over, not me. But then again, I suppose it's a good thing that they're clearly getting along better these days. I guess Yuri will tell me about it later. My mind also keeps focusing on the Valentine's note. Along with Monica's words. Is it really from Sayori? Does she... likes me? The note didn't exactly say that, though. I'm happy, you're happy. What does that mean? <sighs> if she does indeed have feelings, then could the water damage actually be from tears? Ugh! I hope it's tears and not something else. Or is it that's just my overreactive imagination? Still, no matter what's going on, I really should spend more time with Sayori. 
Explaining it to Yuri might be a bit tricky, though. I really want her knowing that Sari might have feelings for me. I mean, in in truth, y'all have good friends. You should talk it out. You know? Let's say Yuri know gently. Hey, you're my buddy. But I'm with Yuri. And we don't hate you for it. And that way Yuri will also know that Sayori and where my eyes stand with that whole Sayori thing. And that way, there's no confusion. <laughs> Which you know these animes like to have the whole damn confusion tropes. Thinking about it, I could just say that I haven't spent much time with Sayori recently. Nothing dishonest about that, and besides, I never do anything to betray Yuri's trust. Yeah, that's a good idea. Shitty idea. <laughs> Man, Yuri really has a habit of reading me when I'm thinking about her, doesn't she? It is Yuri. Hey, hey Yuri, how are you feeling? A little better, thanks. Is that Suki over? Yes, she is. I have to admit, I was a little surprised. Yeah, she mentioned she was going to come out to see you at lunchtime. I didn't see it coming either. She mentioned she was coming to see you at lunchtime. I didn't see me coming either. But it's good to see that you two are getting on so well these days. Hmm, I agree. But even though she's considerate towards my needs, I still feel a little awkward around her, especially when it's just us two. Still, I feel like we're getting to know each other a little better, which is a small price to pay for some awkwardness. Yeah, I was telling Monica about how nice it is to see you two getting along these days. Although, if I'm being honest, as nice it is to have her around, I sh wish it was you who were w looking after me, not her. Huh? But you're the one who said I didn't have to come over when you rang in this morning. You do the opposite of what the girl tells you. Duh. I know. I thought I'd be fine without you for a day, but it's proven to be harder than I imagined. It's only been a few days, Yuri. Sorry, I must be coming across as such a freak right now. You must think I'm so obs obsessive and clingy. I'm not really sure that I would say here. I don't want to upset her by telling her that her behavior is kind of clingy. But on the other hand, I can't deny that it's a bit, uh, I don't know, alarming. To that she can't even bear to be apart from me for a day. <sighs> Not really. If you if you love struck, you want to be with that partner, especially in, a, in an early relationship. This is probably just because we're still in the honeymoon phase of our relationship, right? Monica did talk about how it is important for us, each person in a relationship, to have their own lives in the breathing space, though. I agree with that too. You do also need your own, your own space. It's a, it's a balance. Well, to tell you the truth, I think it's a good thing to spend a little time apart. <sighs> yeah, I don't know if I would have gone with that route. The line goes quiet. I'm starting to worry that I might have said the wrong thing. Salty? You still want to be with me, right? Where's this coming from? Of course I do, Yuri. I love you. Right, of course. Sorry, I'm just being really silly at the moment. I hear her take a deep breath. Don't worry about it, seriously. What did you, you and the others get up to during the club meeting today? She's gonna start cutting herself because she thinks Salty's not with her anymore. Yuri's behavior is still a bit suspicious, but I decided to let it go. This isn't really a conversation to be having over the phone. Ah, uh, not much. We decided to write poems instead of sharing them, so it was qu pretty quiet. Oh well, I look forward to reading your poem, your po latest poem then. Any idea when that would be? Uh, I'm actually feeling a lot better, so most likely tomorrow or the day after. I don't want to jinx anything just yet. Fair enough. I thought you really liked this one, so or so I hope. Oh, what's that? You'll have to wait and see. A man of mystery. <laughs> yeah. There's an awkward moment of silence. Anyway, Natsuki is instinctive that I get some proper rest, so I should probably get more sleep before she gets angry. I'll speak to you soon, and I'll hopefully see you tomorrow, okay? I love you, Salty. Love you too, Yuri. Get some rest. The call ends, and I slip my phone back into my pocket. There's no denying that Yuri does sound a little bit uh, obsessive, but is there anything to be concerned about? Sure, it's good to spend time away from your partner. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed with the fact that it's not Suki and not me who's taking care of her. Well, it's too late to see Yuri now, anyway. Plus, Nurse Natsuki is there, so there's no more much point thinking about it. Think or not for someone who's struggling with acceptance, both from herself and from others. I suppose she's doing well. With a shrug, I turn back to the television screen and immerse myself once more in a colorful world of anime. I recommend Konosuba. Good anime. Great anime. 
Huh. I wonder how much more this game has. Like... Hmm. Hmm. Tell you what, guys, we're gonna save and we're gonna cut quits here. Hope you all are enjoying this. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you all later. We got we got the goods. We got the good stuffs. So yeah, I'll see you all. Bye bye.